But what happens is because that information that comes in solidifies and becomes part of our mental view of ourselves, we then adopt those voices, those terms being stupid, not good enough, uh, something clearly wrong with you, uh, the world's out to get you, you're a failure, uh, you'll never amount to anything. beautiful people of YouTube. How the heck are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Actually, the reason I'm hopping on here in this video today is going to be probably shorter than my last few. By the way, thank you everybody who uh, reached out and responded to last week's video about the interview tips and tricks. That one's gotten a whole heck of a lot more views than my standard video. So I'm glad that seemed to have been of value to so many people and the, the duration of people, uh, the duration of time in which people are watching all the way through the end. So uh, clearly needed information. And again, thank you. Uh, I'm glad I was able to provide that for you and, and thank you all for enjoying it. That is not the reason I'm here to talk to you today. I just wrapped up, uh, do, I point that way like you can see my microphone set up for my podcast is over there. I just wrapped up doing a podcast episode that's going to drop next Tuesday about imposter syndrome. Also a topic that I get a lot of questions about as a coach, people reaching out to me uh, wanting to have a better grasp of understanding it or, or what are the ways you can get over it. I was going to record that episode, uh, oh, oh gosh, two weeks ago, but I got so in-depth in going and, and researching it and trying to get a better understanding as to not only where it comes from, uh, but how common it is, and then what are the steps one would take to get through it, to get past it. And I don't say get over it or, or stop having it, because it seems that no matter what, it is always a part of your psychological makeup, and there's a large amount of our population that has it. It's not isolated to only a few people. You'd be surprised how many people and what levels in the world they are. People we would look up to thinking, wow, they have it too. But also not what I'm here necessarily to talk about. Part of researching the imposter syndrome and, and looking into it all and speaking to a couple of my clients who have asked about it and having discussions with them, I want to do a quick video here about self-talk and how you address yourself. And I think this is an important topic because we are our toughest critics. So, and this stems from imposter syndrome because a lot of times as we're dealing with imposter syndrome or dealing with self-doubt, which they aren't mutually exclusive, but aren't always intertwined. As we go through life, though, we are our toughest critics. And we can be very hard on ourselves, even on a passing sort of off-the-cuff sort of level in that when we maybe make a mistake, a subtle one even, at work or at home or, or whatever, uh, and we just rattle off in our head, oh, so stupid, you know, and we don't think anything of it because we are all, it's all inside of our head. But I argue this, I argue that it is important, even a little one-offs, even if it's like, oh, I don't really mean, I'm not really calling myself stupid. A lot of times these voices that are so critical inside of our own head they aren't really us in the sense that you're not hearing voices. It does come from within your own creative mind, but they are planted there initially by comments someone gave you that either you took uh, because they are a point of authority in your life or someone you trusted or the situation lent itself as to, well, why else would they say that unless it's true? So it must be true. It's, I don't even know this person and they said that about me or to me. So it must be fact. And I've talked about this before in other videos in the sense of uh, myself dealing with dyslexia and the, the challenges that offered me of, of self-perception of my value and my abilities, my intelligence, but also to uh, working with several people. I've come to recognize that as we're growing up, and I've done some, some research on this too, as we're growing up in our childhood, preteens, and then in our teens into our early 20s, the cutoff is usually 23, 25, uh, we're still developing a lot of perception within our mind. Our brain is developing. And the input of information we get really kind of sets that foundation. Think of it as if you've ever worked with you know, concrete or anything that's going to firm up over time as it, as it, after it's molded. So you can shape clay or you can shape concrete, and then in time it will dry and become a solid. It becomes permanent. So similarly, your in input that you're getting from people is fluid and for whatever reason we may choose to hold on to it believe it or even maybe not even choose to but it does it sets and it firms up and becomes hard and then from our early to mid 20s on 
we consider it fact. And again, that comes from maybe uh, for myself. I know I was told by some teachers that clearly I just wasn't trying hard enough. I was being lazy. So it got into my head that I was academically lazy. I knew it wasn't physically lazy. I, lo I loved being physically active, but academically lazy. That I, I was smart, but I'm choosing not to. And that kind of stuck with me over time. Uh, there's other opportunities, too, where people have been taught that they aren't good enough uh, because they aren't meeting the a criteria that an adult in their life has set for them. That one adult, one person out of billions, but because you're at that influential stage, that is fact, and you take it as fact. And it's not until usually later in life when you can kind of extract yourself, uh, you can get perspective and realize, wait a minute, that wasn't fact. I am good enough. But what happens is because that information that comes in solidifies and becomes part of our mental view of ourself. We then adopt those voices, those terms being stupid, not good enough, uh, something clearly wrong with you, uh, the world's out to get you, you're a failure, uh, you'll never amount to anything. Now, sometimes those things are given to us and it fires us up to prove people wrong. But even, and I would argue, given, given my experiences and <laughs> who I've spoken to, even if it fires you up to try and prove them wrong, you still carry that burden with you that you're always having to prove them wrong on that one or two statements or the couple of years of statements or actions that happen. That becomes now, no matter what I'm doing, I am proving them wrong. And unfortunately, that's not always the healthiest thing. Sure, you can get a lot accomplished and you can do a lot and get a lot done. You can reach certain levels in your career, academia or whatever. But internally, you'll never be enough. You'll never have proved them wrong completely, no matter what you do, because you're playing that cycle over and over again. So what I want to get at, goodness, time is running pretty quick here. What, what I'm getting at is that when you hear yourself, even on the offhand, you know, oh, being stupid, dumb, whatever, oh, of course, I'm an idiot, stop yourself and think real quick. The person you love and adore most in your life, it could be a grandparent, it could be a child, it could be a niece or nephew, uh, anybody that you would lovingly take care of, stop for a moment and ask yourself, would I have said that to that person's face? Would I have directly told them because they just did what I did? Would I have told them they're stupid, that they're dumb, they're not good enough, they're a failure? Or would I choose a kinder way of going, well, that's an opportunity to learn a lesson? You know, would I support them and would I love them? And this is important because at some point we need that in our life. And at some point, many of us never received that or didn't receive a type of it that resonated with us to help us grow. So we adopted this terminology and this language when speaking to ourselves. It's very unhealthy. So when we can start shifting that dialogue, changing that dialogue, we start to experience growth. And it's part of the whole process of taking a little more control of life, of your life, in the sense of taking responsibility for it, and then shifting the dialogue, and then also shifting your perspective, which then allows you to grow in whatever capacity, whether it's setting big life dream goals or just looking to shift your perspective on life to have sort of a different view. All of these things come into how you perceive yourself. Are you worthy? Can you do this? Are you good enough? Are there things you've accomplished that you can be proud of? And all of those steps matter. And what really matters then is that self-talk. And again, I go back to some people will say, oh, it's I don't really mean it. doesn't matter if you really mean it. You're repeating someone else's terminology to yourself. It's damaging. And it's terminology you wouldn't use and words you would not use in the face of someone you loved and cared for. It's time to look at yourself and realize that you need to be that person that's loved and cared for by yourself as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to try and keep this video shorter than some of my last ones today. I hope you are all doing well. And on Tuesday coming up, I want you to check out the self-sabotage, and I'm sorry, not self-sabotage, the <laughs> imposter syndrome video. Wow, I'm doing really good on this one. Imposter syndrome podcast that's coming out on Tuesday. The podcast is We All Have Something. You can just simply search We All Have Something anywhere you listen to your podcast. Or you can go to the website link down below to my podcast website and find a way to play it from either there or the player that you would like to listen to it on. I encourage you to listen, though, because it's fascinating. I, I, like I said, I was planning on, on actually recording and releasing that last week, but there was just so much. I was diving so deep into it, and I tried to keep it to 30 minutes, um, and I just still don't feel like I covered everything, but I think you'll find it fascinating. So I hope you guys give it a listen. Let me know what you think, and also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I appreciate it. Subscriptions have already jumped past 6,500, which go team. Look at you all jumping in there. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if nothing else, if uh, you want to reach out to me too, you can find me on my website, 
coachrickschwartz.com, link down below. And also I'm on social media. You can find those links below as well. So with that, I'm just going to say, have a good one, everybody. Thank you.